Um, hey, Coach, I have a just kind of a technical uh, question for you. It seems like when you, your DBs, when uh, they're in coverage, you usually play at the hands um, more so than anything else. So I'm just kind of curious, so your philosophy behind, you know, wanting guys to, to play hands and at what, at what at what point are they allowed to maybe look back at a ball and make a play on it? Uh, uh, they're, they're allowed to turn and look at uh, for the ball whenever they have vertical control uh, on a wide receiver. If not, uh, then we're going to play the eyes and the hands uh, of the wide receiver and make sure that we're in position to always finish every play with a tackle. So if the receiver catches the ball, we want to make sure that we uh, uh, can finish and uh, uh, make the tackle and complete the play. Um, now, there are a lot of scenarios uh, based off of the, the type of coverage that we're in. You know, zone coverage uh, versus man coverage, uh, off uh, versus press, uh, that dictates a, a lot of the um, finish rules that we have, uh, so to speak. But uh, no matter what the situation is, uh, if we are on top of a receiver and we have vertical control, uh, we will look back for the ball and try to play the ball. If we're not, then we're going to play through the eyes and the hands. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Chip, go ahead. Chris, can you talk about your uh, your philosophy on blitz with this defense and, you know, obviously pressuring with four or trying to get there with four, um, you know, based on the talent you have? Um, I, I guess what – can you like, elaborate you on the question a little you bit? Feel, you feel like you have the guys to get there with four so that you don't have to blitz and uh, – It depends on who we're playing. You know, uh, and, and it depends on our self scout on on how much we've been doing something versus another. Um, so, you know, everything is situational. Um, you know, we're going to do what we feel is, is best to that gives us a chance to to win a game. Uh, sometimes that's going to be uh, to bring four uh, could be bringing five. It could be a simulated rush. Um, but, uh, you know, we're going to have enough in our our. Uh, package that, that we can do what is required uh, based on the situation. And sometimes that's rush three, uh, which, uh, you know, we've done also. So um, to, to sit here and I feel good about our guys um, in, in all of those situations that, um, you know, we, we can do whatever we need to do to give our, ourselves a chance. Dennis, go ahead. Coach, when you're playing a team like this where their skill positions command so much attention on their own, is there a simple key? Is it just about balance? And, and do you even look at last year's tape? Because the Horns actually did a pretty good job against these guys last year, relatively. Um, there's nothing simple about playing defense in this day and age. Uh, so if, you, if you're, you're looking for a, a, a simple um, one thing that uh, uh, would lead to success, uh, basically magic in a bottle uh, that doesn't exist in this day and age. Um, you know, we, we have to do a great job in every game of, of trying to stop the run. Um, that's the, the, the very first thing we have to do. The second thing is we have to make sure we can limit explosive plays in the pass game. And that's hard to do when you sell out to stop the run. So uh, you have to, you know, you play that balancing act of, you know, when to load the box, when not to load the box, uh, when do you address a receiver, um, you know, versus, you know, something else. So uh, it, it all goes into it. Um, I, I wish there was something simplistic about it, but, you know, as offenses in, in this day and age, you know, operate uh, with tempo, uh, with, uh, you know, trying to run the ball with, with uh, different splits, uh, RPOs and things like that. It's a challenge every week. Brian, you're up. Yeah, Chris, uh, two, two questions about uh, pressure. Uh, for, first one is, uh, how do you think Joe has done five games in at this new position? How would you rate his overall performance? I think he's done an outstanding job. Um, he's hit the quarterback a lot. He's gotten to the quarterback a lot. And, and I know everybody gets caught up in numbers of sacks, uh, which those are important as well. But uh, the hits sometimes are just as important, if not more, uh, because they affect the quarterback. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we talk about being able to affect the quarterback. And I think Joe's been able to do that uh, from people trying to change the way they uh, protect uh, with, with Joe and where where he's at, um, you know, to getting rid of the ball uh, quicker. So uh, Joe doesn't have a chance to get there. I mean, Joe's a, a dynamic player and uh, he's affected the quarterbacks or he's affected the, you know, the protection that teams go into a game with uh, because of what he's put on film. Right. And then and along those lines, I mean, you, you 
you're right. Fans only see fans and, and, and media. We, we only see stats, you know, sacks and, and quarterback pressures where you guys are looking at moving the quarterback around. How do you gauge what is successful when you're talking about something that is not subjective like that? Uh, at the end of the day, one, uh, did you play well enough to win? You know, that, that's that's what it all comes down to in all areas, in all key stats. Uh, and then if you don't, you know, what were the key stats that um, you know, were in your favor? And then you look at just, uh, you know, talking about, you know, pass rush, you know, sacks don't just happen on third down, you know, happen on first and second down as well. But if you look at third down specifically, what is your third down uh, success? Um, you know, what is your win percentage on third down? And uh, sometimes that, that win percentage is going to go up with more sacks that you get. Sometimes it can be pretty high just by affecting the quarterback, getting them off the spot, uh, making them get rid of the ball uh, quicker. You know, so you look at all of, all of those things. But I'm looking at, first and foremost, did we play well enough to win? Uh, did we pressure and affect the quarterback uh, enough to have success in critical situations like third down? Mike, go ahead. Uh, Chris, I wanted to ask you about what do you see on film? I know that Dennis asked you a little bit about the film, but if you had to pick one thing that you see on Oklahoma State that really gives you nightmares, so to speak, what is something that you've seen on film from them that uh, gets you going every day? Uh, it, they're, they're fast. They've got good team speed on offense. Um, they can run the football and uh, they've got good receivers on the outside that they can beat you down the field. You know, so that combination uh, is, you know, what is, is uh, difficult to uh, defend. You know, they, they spread you out and it's all about numbers. You know, they, it, you, you uh, spread them out, they're going to run the ball. You pack it in, they're going to throw the ball. So, you know, th those, uh, those are the challenges that we're faced with, with good players. Chris, go ahead. Chris, it seemed like the Baylor game was was the best defensive performance you guys have had all season, certainly in Big 12 play. Maybe the, the UTEP game was better. Um, why was that? And and do you feel like with, you know, five games, five weeks into the season, the training camp that you did have, a couple of bye weeks, do you feel like the defense and the is, your defense is starting to set in and the players are starting to fully understand it? Or are you having to change things to have that success you had against Baylor? Well, I mean, it, it's – it's simple math and it's reps. You know, the more reps we get doing the same thing over and over and over, the better we're going to be. And, you know, as we go through the season, we're getting more and more reps at the things that we've been um, uh, installing. You know, again, we, we have a number of players in positions that have never played these positions before. Uh, we talked about this last week, you know, two guys in particular, three really, Chris Adamora, um, Anthony Cook and DeMarvion Overshawn, they're playing positions closer to the line of scrimmage that they've never played before. Never been trained to do uh, these things in high school, never been trained to do the, these things at the University of Texas. Uh, and when the, you move closer to the ball, things happen faster. Your reads are different. You have to read and react to things differently. Uh, that takes a ton of time, a ton of reps, and a lot of training to, to get someone to play and react uh, very quickly. And uh, the more reps we get, those – players uh, are playing better. Um, we talked about Joseph Osai is playing in a new position. The more reps he gets, the better that he gets. Uh, so just overall, collectively, when you put those things together, you know, we keep getting better every day. That's our focus. Uh, that's it. It's not about who we're playing. It's not about where we're playing. It's not about stats. Uh, at the end of the day, our focus defensively every day is to somehow get better. And I think we're doing that. Um, even in some of the games where you know, people might not uh, feel like we played uh, well, we got better at certain things. And uh, that's, that's uh, really what we're, we're uh, focused on and uh, what's driving us. And our players are motiva motivated by that because they see the improvement too. Danny, go ahead. Hey, Chris. Um, just can I get your overall thoughts on Spencer Sanders and the challenges of you know, trying to scheme for a dual threat quarterback? Yeah, he's a very good player. Um, he's he's quick. Um, he's fast. He, he's got quick release. Uh, he's he's really um, a challenge and, and fits perfect in their offense on on uh, what they want to do. But uh, absolutely, he's going to be a, a huge challenge here this weekend. Um, being able to to contain him in the run game and also uh, put some pressure on him in the pass game. He's dynamic. Marcus, you're up. Yeah, going back to, to Joseph Asai, um, how important is he 
overall to this defense and especially in the improvement in, in the improvements that you guys have seen. And then in the run game, you know, being at a new position, do you think he has uh, shown improvement there? Yeah, Joseph's shown improvement like other players in, in all areas of his game. You know, all of them, everyone that's playing out there has shown improvement um, in some area of their game. And Joseph is no different. Joseph has improved himself in his pass rush. Uh, he's improved himself in his run fundamentals. Uh, he's improved himself just in his football IQ and understanding formations and sets and, you know, things like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's he's uh, an important piece to, to our puzzle. Joe, go ahead. Chris, Coach Sherman said on uh, on Monday that y'all want more production, would like to see more out of Chris Adamora. So kind of going along with that, what has he done well at that position, learning like you mentioned, and what does he really need to improve on uh, at that spurt? Well, I think we talked about this last week, too. I mean, I was asked uh, about, you know, areas um, that we need to improve and uh, perimeter play um, is an area that we need to get better at. We're, we're letting, you know, too many balls get outside the edge of our defense out to the field. Uh, we need to be able to, uh, you know, read and react and, and set the edge, you know, uh, out to the field on, on certain plays. And, um, you know, sometimes that's Chris in there. Sometimes it's Anthony Cook in there. It's just the position in general. Uh, we we are, are constantly trying to work on, um, you know, reading and react and using our hands better, getting off blocks better, fitting where we need to to fit, because sometimes that guy is pulled into the box and he needs to fit, um, and uh, it's a different position for him. You're talking about a corner and a safety, uh, based on the formation, and it has to fit in the box. You know, that's not going to happen overnight. Uh, sure as heck, it isn't going to be real clean without, you know, some some extra reps. And uh, they're working really hard to improve in those areas. And we're putting in those situations uh, in practice a lot each week. They're getting a little bit better on, on certain things, but each week uh, an opponent does something different and it, it uh, brings up a different set of challenges that they have to work on. So, um, yeah, we do uh, want more. We want more production out of all of our players, but we need uh, some some more production out of that uh, position, uh, not a, a particular player, but that position uh, overall. Chip, go ahead. Chris, what um, Cade Brewer yesterday was talking about, um, check your ego, you know, check your ego at the door, play for each other. Are you seeing more of that um, with the defense? And, you know, how would you assess how this defense is coming together? Yeah, I'm really happy with the culture and the leadership uh, that we have on defense right now. Um, I, don't, I don't feel any uh, resistance um, towards what we're asking guys to do. Um, either from a technique, a schematic, or a work standpoint. Um, uh, they're, they're, I think they're all bought in. Um, they believe in what we're, we're doing. Uh, they're motivated uh, by the improvement that they see uh, each day on, on film. And I'm really, really pleased with uh, that. I don't, uh, we don't have ego problems. Uh, we don't have selfishness um, you know, on, on, on defense right now that I have witnessed at all. I'm, I'm really pleased coming to work every day with these guys, and that's why we're getting better. Hey, Coach. Um, Coach Herman talked about how Oklahoma State's playing elite defense. Uh, from your vantage point, what what jumps off the the game film for them? What what do they do best? Um, they're they're very very good on third down, um, and they're good in the red zone. Um, they're they're good both against the run and the pass. Um, they create a little bit of havoc uh, havoc um, in the way they align um, the amount of blitzes that they present. Their fronts, their movements, you know, they're a, they're a handful. Um, a lot of different disguises, coverage-wise. Um, the ability to play man effectively makes them a very good defense. Onward, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, you spent so many years at Oklahoma State, and the one thing that uh, you guys did really well was develop the talent that you have there. What What's the key is you guys don't go didn't, didn't go after five stars. Oklahoma State doesn't go after five stars and – or four stars, but what's how do the how do you guys find these guys and how did how do they develop into the players that we see now that you're studying on film now? That's a great question, and I think there's a lot of different things that factor into uh, development of young people, um, student athletes, um, and I think it's it's you know all across the board. It's really the same things as consistency. Um, you need consistency in your program. Um, you need um, to recruit guys that have character 
you know, winners on and off the field that that affects things as well. And, you know, the maturity and the understanding, the education, the communication, how clear it is. Those are things that all help development and bring, uh, you know, student athletes along and bring your culture to where it needs to be. And, um, you know, that's uh, it's all part of it. You know, you want your leadership to branch down into your players so that your core leadership doesn't just extend through and end with the staff. It also branches into, you know, your players. And, and so they're an extension of, of you. And then it melts down even further than that. And then hopefully the majority of your players become core leaders within your program. All of those things take time. Um, they don't happen overnight. Coach Gundy's been there for a long time. I think that's part of it. Um, I know that's part of it. Um, the sort of sustainability is something that, uh, you know, there's going to be rough patches, you know, the, the ups and downs of, of trying to build and sustain. So there's got to be, uh, you know, the, the, the vision and um, a due course. Brian, go ahead. Mike, when you've got three, uh, three running backs, Convince me why rotating them is better than going with the best guy or riding the riding, letting a guy stay in there and, and let him get a rhythm. Well, the the benefit of of rotating is is the, that you're keeping them fresh. Um, you know, a fresh tailback is is best for us. Um, if a guy, you know, after a, a few carries is especially when you're playing with tempo. If, if there's a, you know, a fresher guy on the, on the bench and, you know, if there's obvious separation between, um, you know, the competition there, then I think playing one over the other one has its advantages as long as, you know, everything else is equal. Obviously, we want to play all three. We feel that all three are capable. And when they're fresh, they're most effective. Nick, you're up. Yeah, Mike, you, you obviously took a, a pretty unusual route to get to Oklahoma State. Um, just kind of curious, you know, looking back, I think your first meeting with Coach Gandhi, you guys kind of ended up linking up in a hotel somewhere. Just curious, you know, what, what was that, I guess, initial meeting like with Coach Gundy? And, and I, did you sort of know that, oh, that you know, three-hour session you had with him was going to flip up your whole life? Yeah, you, when you're in a situation like that, you don't want to get caught up in a moment and think about how, how much it can affect your life. You're just trying to stay detailed. So I tried to stay as focused as I possibly could. If I thought about the impact of that thing, I probably would have been a stuttering fool um, and, and probably thrown up all over myself, to be honest with you. But uh, it, was, it was a great meeting. It was, um, you know, it was a lot about organization. He wanted to know um, how I organize things, how I communicate with my staff. Um, you know, more philosophical, how I approach the teaching aspect of the game, um, not necessarily the X's and O's. Um, I think he watched a lot. Of, I know we watched a lot of film. So uh, the, the ball was on the tape, um, you know, and it was more of a get to know you and then more philosophical and probing how you teach, how you structure, how you organize, uh, brought more broad strokes, trying to really get to know me as a as a leader of an offense, I guess. Chris, go ahead. Mike, what do you think the emotions are going to be like for you going back to that place where you were for so long, going up against so many familiar faces and, and wanting to beat these guys that you were so close with for so long? I, you have to treat this game like any other. If you get caught up in the emotions, I'll become less less effective. So if this game becomes something more than just a very important ball game for us, which every ball game is. Um, that's the approach you have to take. Um, I would be disappointed myself if I took some or other uh, approach and got too emotional or thought about anything other than just, you know, faceless opponent. Um, you know, what's, what's their tendencies on third down? What are our calls? Um, you know, what, what are we trying to attack? What do we need to be looking for? Those are the things that will be going through my mind as we approach this ball game. Joe, go ahead. Both you and Coach Herman talked about man coverage being a big staple uh, for the Oklahoma State defense. Is having a guy like Josh Moore who can uh, go downfield, run past guys downfield, and also jump over them, it seems like, help out in that quest to beat man coverage? 
Absolutely. Uh, there's certain things that you can try to help yourself with man coverage from a schematic standpoint, but at the end of the day, it's one-on-one. -on -one. And um, we've worked real hard on one-on-ones leading up to this ball game all year long. That's a very important part of practice for us. Our guys are looking forward to the challenge and uh, it is going to be exactly that. It is going to be a challenge and, and, and one we uh, eagerly anticipate. Mike, go ahead. Coach, we uh, talked to Sam yesterday, and, and for the last couple of years, he had LJ Humphrey, he had Devin Duvernay, two guys that he knew were going to be on the field all the time. He knew where they were going to be. And he mentioned the, the lack, now, I wouldn't say total lack of chemistry amongst the wide receivers, but going through the rotation and trying to find his groove. When, when he's going through something like that and he's talking about stuff like that, what is your message to him to, to try to find that cohesiveness with his wide receiver group? Um, he has to do his job first. And, and then, um, you know, to be concerned, we have to go to work. You know, it, it's just, it's a matter of timing. It's a matter of work. It's a matter of practice. It's, it's um, you can't get frustrated. Uh, you have to teach, you have to communicate with your guys. Um, you have to get on the same page and it's, 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 it's everybody's fault. It's nobody's fault. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, Hey, we got to get all on the same page and it's a process and we have to continue to work. Um, frustration will only um, frustration in any regard in any timing or any, um, you know, thing of that nature, uh, whether it be quarterbacks, receivers, whether it be, you know, the running backs in the O line, any, any of that, it's a working uh, deal to where any frustration, all, all that do, all that will do is delay improvement. Um, so take a deep breath, you know, take a deep breath. If things aren't going good, take a deep breath, communicate. Let's all get on the same page, go back to work. That's all we can do. Jake, you're up. Yeah, Mike, uh, two questions about the tight ends. Uh, first, specifically uh, with Jared, what kind of improvement have you seen out of him this year? And is the tight end involvement in the offense right now where you would like it to be, both in terms of uh, pass catching and blocking? I think it all depends on the matchups that we get and the opponent that we're facing and how we can match them up and how they defend um, 11 or 12 personnel for us. Those are our two main personnel groupings. Um, you know, Jared's done a nice job of, of becoming more physical. And, and that's where it starts at the point, at the line of scrimmage, um, his physicality. And then on top of that, um, he's running much better downfield and catching, obviously, in the games you're seeing that. We need to see that consistency continue throughout practice and make sure that uh, that game speed is replicated on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, there's a tendency for him not to always run at that full tempo that he displays on Saturdays. And we need that to be a very consistent thing with him on practice, too. Danny, go ahead. Mike, I'm a little curious. I'm going off that tight end question. Why did you think Malcolm was better fitted to be a tight end as opposed to kind of that outside X receiver he was playing last year? Well, I think that he's a guy that you can line up as tight end and uh, he's strong enough and willing uh, to block a defensive end or insert for a middle linebacker and matches up well from a, a physical standpoint. So anytime a player can do that and also at times flex out and, and give you something in the slot or at number one position, that gives you um, a little bit more variety. So now are you playing with 12 or is it 11? How's the defense see you? How can you get uh, you know a personnel mismatch and maybe lock them into a certain personnel grouping that they don't feel that they're, you know, maybe they can't run their whole blitz package out of, or maybe you're, you're forcing them to play with four down or, whatever, you know, each defense is a little bit different in how they defend 12 personnel or 11 personnel or how they see you um, and how they substitute their defenses. So from just making him a, a wide receiver and saying, hey, you're going to be a wide out, um, to me is a little bit limiting because one, just, you know, his God given, if you just let nature take its course, that young man with strength and and his his density and, and, and body mass, um, you know, I think he's more geared naturally towards more of a tight end position. So I think, you know, it really, it was his suggestion that it, it derived from 
where he wanted to put his hand down and play some tight end. Cause I think that's what he thinks is best for his development personally. And, and we matched that. We, we, we agreed with that uh, from a program standpoint. And so we evolved to that. Chip, you're up. Mike, what did you like? What didn't you like about the, uh, the offenses performance against Baylor? Where did you see the, the most improvement and what, where does Bijan Robinson need to take the next step? Um, likes, um, it was very important for us to start the third quarter fast and go into the second half and we came down, we scored. That was a very important drive for us. We challenged our guys all week, challenged them in the locker room at halftime and they responded well. Conversely, slow start in the first quarter. Um, you know, Missed opportunity on third down on the first two series. The second series, we did get a first down. And then on the third and three, didn't execute there. Um, so slow start, didn't like that. Um, liked our third down effectiveness. We were better on third downs. Um, did a lot better staying on, out of third and extra long, more on schedule, more behind the chains, less penalties, less missed assignments. There was a lot of positive takes. Um, but uh, the second part of your uh, question was about Bijan, correct? And and can you ask that one again, please? Yeah, where 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 do you see him making progress, and where does he need to make more progress? Well, I think he's he's gaining more vision through the holes. He's seeing it better. Um, he's had a good week. He, yesterday was very good for him. Um, you know, the the improvement for him is is just about everything from pass protection, blitz pickup, recognition. It's not the physicality or the fit, it's recognition, understanding protection rules, assignments, having his eyes right, his eyes right in both protection and the run game, his vision, his reads, when to hit it, when to cut it back, when to press it, all those sorts of things. And as far as the running game in general, what, what did you like about the, the Baylor game? Well, we were, we were on people. We, we created some movement at the line of scrimmage. Um, there were a lot of tough runs in that game, a lot of physical downhill. You know, in the third quarter, uh, we lined up in 12 personnel and, and uh, went down the field. That was on, uh, I remember, Jared's uh, long catch right before that. It was like a second and short. We were thinking about taking a shot there and decided to run the inside zone one more time, and it popped. So staying patient with those guys and, and uh, you know, grinding them out, wearing them out, being able to stay on the field for 32 minutes. Um, helped our defense. So by running the ball better, we played better defensively, which is good. You know, it helps its team football. So that was good. 